Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today we're going to spend some time together doing a beautiful design, organic design, or zentangle, as you you know you wish to call it. We're going to use our, our journal, or if you don't have a journal, you can use a mix and media paper. I highly encourage you to buy a journal eventually or to keep all of your practices nice and neat and well organized in a folder. So this is why I prefer to use journals, so I have everything in there. Uh, if you have a big uh, mix and media pad, such as 9 per 12, I also suggest you to divide the pages into halves so you can do a design that it's not too big and it doesn't feel too overwhelming for you. So you will be able to do it along with me or do it at your own convenience, but you can... Uh, uh, be sure to finish what you start, which in fact, if you know me already, is one of my uh, most important roles that we should keep in our life, um, not only in art uh, and usually in all the practice and every activity that we do. We should always uh, uh, finish what we start, even if sometimes we need to give ourselves the little extra push. So hopefully it's going to be uh, an opportunity for you to spend some time in doing something a little different from what you do every day, something a little maybe for some of you out of the comfort zone, something that is just about you and is going to help you to definitely improve your fine motor skills, uh, relaxation with mental focus. For this practice, you need, as I say, a mixed media paper or your journal, pencil, uh, an eraser, just in case. And then uh, I'm going to do something that is almost all black and white since we have been working on so many colors and color palettes and color combinations sometimes it's also good to offer something completely different so an extra fine sharpie or any brand that you have available a regular tip sharpie or any brand that you have available if you do not have alcohol marker this practice can be done with regular washable markers as well and then just one color, a very like intense yellow. You can use the yellow, but if you have another color in mind that is really dear to you and you're very connected with the color and you really like to see it on your artworks and on your paper, feel free to do so. It is important that you always connect with the practice. And now I'm gonna switch the camera so we can start. Okay, this is my material ready. It's my journal, pencil with a little eraser and the materials that I uh, share with you at the beginning. We're going to move those aside and we're going to start our practice with a pencil. We're going to reduce, as usually I like to reframe my space. You can do the same, mostly if you have a big piece of paper, so you're going to make sure that your design is not too big. You can do it freehand as I'm doing it, or you can do it with ruler if you like everything to be very precise and exact. I personally like very well-crafted things, but still that they show that uh, you know, organic element, a spontaneous element, that's my, my thing. So we're going to get inspired by flowers. So we're going to kind of fill the space with flowers. And the challenge is that we're going to try our best to fill the space, modifying the natural shape of petals in a way that they can really fulfill the space that we have available. So at the beginning, it's not going to be a challenge because we are placing the first flower, but then you will notice that little by little, as long as, you know, as much as, oh, sorry, as much, when we start to feel more of this space, it's gonna be a little tricky and we will have some smaller flowers with kind of weird looking petals. So we're gonna play with our space, which is a very important element in art. And we can learn about space in a very, very different way. Uh, we can learn about uh, the use of space, we can learn about the illusion of space with very visu different visual devices, such as positioning, overlapping, sizes, etc. This is really a no pretension design, very simple, everybody can do it. It's for really all skill levels. And doing first with a pencil and then uh, going over with the markers is going to give you the opportunity to practice uh, your fine model skills twice. Also doing it first with a pencil is going to also allow you to just in case you want to change something or modify something to erase what you did. I'm 
gonna keep going bigger and smaller and I place one in the center and this one will determine the other ones around If you want to do also other shapes of petal, I'm not really focusing on the variety of flowers because this is not the intent of this practice. But if you want to try with a different type of flower because it's what you like the most, go for it. You can also do one with me exactly as I'm doing it and then you can do one by yourself playing with this type of technique and the way that we are using the space for this project, maybe with a different type of design inside or a different type of flower. As you can see in uh, these smaller flowers, the petals really have very different sizes. And this is exactly what we want. We're gonna do maybe a nice, very tiny one here. Maybe another one here, even tinier. And I see that I have enough. I'm gonna put my pencil away and then I'm going to go over with my black Sharpie. This is actually good if you wanna modify something with the Sharpie, if you wanna kind of change a little bit some of the shape of the petal, this is the right moment to do so. You will be able to erase the pencil in case you need at the end. Don't worry if you go a little bit outside, so in this negative space, which is a space around the flowers, because we're going to fulfill the space with all black. So going back to the element of space, this is also a very nice exercise, simple, that if you want to do it, maybe simplifying the design inside that you want to do it with your kids or grandkids or your homeschooling you know uh, some student it's a very good way for them to learn a positive and negative space contrast also something very visual and since it's not too complicated we're not putting any emphasis or focus on the design it's the perfect uh, opportunity to just focus on one single element, in this case, the space. When I work with my students in school, I am very specific and even when I use a marker to show them the example through the projector, just because I want to make sure that they can all see very well. Um, I tell them to use pencil. I, we always draw with pencil first because we can erase just in case something happens and we don't like it and we wanna modify that. And also because it gives us the opportunity to then go up, like to go on with the outlines and double our practice. And practice is the key, right? We can be as talented and as advanced as we want, but talent by itself, we just arrive at one point. Then we need a practice and consistency. I know that some of my uh, subscribers share with me that they are using my practices to recover from an injury, so to kind of a rework on their fine motor skills. Some people, you know, sometimes, and I have my mama, always struggle with very shaky hands and she really likes art, so that's good because she can uh, practice 
some painting, uh, some drawing, uh, some coloring, and definitely it has been extremely helpful for her to keep the shaking under control and to keep also the coordination skills, brain, hand, nice and sharp. Now, if you're very young, it's not an issue for you, but if you, as you start to age, it is important to, you know, train the brain and the skills as well as we train physical skills, doing some sports, some kind of exercises. This is a mental, emotional exercise. Make sure that you have a nice posture while you do this practice with me. If you feel that you need to adjust it, do so. Make yourself always very comfortable. If you want to use some nice music in the background, why not? If you're embracing silence, go for it. Do your best to make yourself comfortable so you can kind of eliminate all the excuses that might keep you from practicing art once or twice per week. Our culture, at least in the Western culture, didn't and doesn't teach us to include art practices in our daily routine, regardless of our skills and talents and our careers and profession, right? As I say multiple times, we don't stop playing soccer or basketball or we don't stop dancing or st other, st other sport just because we know that we will not be a professional, right? And we should face art the same way. That is a narrative that little by little is changing in school. Uh, and I'm very glad for that. And there is still so much to do and a long path uh, in front of us but at least we are talking about this thing now we know that we need to do something right we're gonna do an outline also here and voila now if you want to grab your eraser you can erase some of the line with a pencil don't stress too much about it because at the end they won't really we will barely notice them our thicker marker and we exercise patient patients in this filling the gaps another very therapeutic uh, activity we're gonna feel maybe a little frustrations in doing so and so we need to really focus breathe and keep going some of you will love it I personally really, really like this activity of filling the gap and coloring the negative space. Some of you might feel it, as I say, might find it a little tedious, but that's all part of the process and all part of the experience. And we're gonna face this process and we're gonna embrace it with everything that it brings to the table. If you by accident to go a little bit inside the pedal, don't worry. You will use these markers to reshape the pedals. Nobody will notice. And also remember, it's part of that process. And it's, uh, it's going to become a characteristic and a trait of personality of this specific design that you're doing now in this very moment. So don't feel frustrated. Just embrace it and feel happy about it.
I really like to outline the spaces that I before I color them inside. It's just helped me to to process. And it makes sense to me. Yes, definitely it's very satisfying to see that little by little all the spaces are getting filled with black. And you will also notice that fulfilling the negative space around the positive space, around the images, will make the images itself pop. pop. your break if you need to do so you can pause the video and then resume it you can shake your hands i know that after a while you will feel it which is an incredibly good exercise for the muscle in our hand but once again you need to make yourself comfortable right and it has to be a pleasant experience so don't feel that you have to force push or sustain my pace or my rhythm really grateful for this opportunity to spend some time on my art journal since now school is uh, on again and as a teacher you can you know it's very busy and it's not easy to go back to that very busy schedules and all the routines and stuff like that so I'm really uh, treasuring this opportunity to kind of you know reset refocus and do something just for me for us for this community for which i am so very grateful Something like this can be done also using different media. You can use definitely coloring pencil or even watercolors. If you've been, you know, if you've been following my videos on uh, Talaveras, if you didn't, I encourage you to check them out because they are beautiful and it's such a good training because we design, we outline, and then we need to fill different spaces, positive and negative. And you know, it's such a tremendous exercise, mostly if you do it with watercolors, because it's gonna be a very good training for your fine motor skills. But even if you used a coloring pencil or a brush marker, for example, which I always encourage you to use them, not only as their own media, but also as a preparatory step for traditional watercolors, right? Because you can control the brush markers a little more and better than you will control a traditional brush but at the same time you're building skills so that you will need also to paint with watercolor so 
I encourage you to buy. You don't have to buy expensive supplies. As I always say, we can create beautiful and meaningful art also with very simple and scholastic supplies. And then in case we really want to invest because we feel that our skills are getting better and better and we would like to invest in more professional and more expensive art supplies, you can do so. But sometimes, you know, don't think that just buying the most expensive, spectacular and professional uh, supplies, you will have immediately great result because sometimes the more professional our supplies are also more tricky to use, right? You really need to know the technique. So I always suggest you to build a very good foundation and don't rush into, you know, update the supplies. You will always have the chance and... Uh, the opportunity to do so and also sometimes it could be an excuse for us not to practice so oh, i cannot do this because i don't have that specific supplies i cannot do it don't do that just so we try your best to say you know what i'm gonna use what i have and i'm gonna enjoy the process i'm gonna understand the technique i'm gonna understand the steps and then if i feel that i want to do it again in the future and be more prepared with a different type of media supplies i can do so We're almost there, and I don't know about you, but it's definitely teaching me perseverance and patience because, you know, that is a little frustration. Like, okay, now I want to be done. There is one more little space, one more little detail. And that's another beautiful emotional benefit of our practices. We did it. I'm gonna retouch here and there, so make sure that you go back over your design. And if you see tiny, tiny little gaps, you're gonna fill them with the black. If you think that you wanna reshape some of the petals, do so. We wanna make sure that we dedicate attention and care to everything that we do, right? here and I am pretty happy and look it looks so pretty already so pretty now as I told you I'm gonna use a bright like an intense yellow if you have a dear special color that you want to use use that color it is important that you personally connect with the piece I'm gonna use the yellow simply to fulfill the inside of our flower the center nothing more than that Very nice, the contrast of yellow and black. You always made me think about bees, and I love bees. And I want to say the yellow is not a color that I use so much for clothing, for example, while I use black often. But it's really, really, really nice contrast. I think that we have all the center, and now. Once again, it's your choice. So you can leave it as it is, and it's already beautiful and effective. So if you don't want to and you add enough, you can leave it. I'm gonna use again my extra fine and add some lines in the flowers. I don't know exactly if I'm gonna do all of them. So I would actually start from the biggest flower. And then if I like it, I will expand it to all the flower. Otherwise, I might leave it like that. And once again, it's a nice opportunity to work on some smooth lines undulated lines, straight lines, and it's very relaxing. Uh, repeating the same element over and over will impact your design and your practice as well.
If you want to do less lines, go for less lines. Definitely adding those lines is adding a lot of movement and rhythm to the piece. I want my line to be organic, so nice, you know, curvy lines, some squiggling, sometimes a little overlapping. To create some interest and variation, you see? A kind of an overlapping but you can do if you know something different as I say if you prefer some more like a geometrical neat lines straight lines into the pedal once again you have to do you if you are not sure, you can watch me doing those lines and see how the project looks at the end and you can have a better idea if you want to do, you know, those lines or you prefer to leave it plain black and white. My washing machine in the background that just finished and washed. <laughs> if it happened, if you like, like it just did that I went inside the yellow with, a, you know, the black, you can kind of reframe the circle inside. Or you can just leave it. So we have two like here. I think that I will do one here and maybe one here, these two, to leave the space, like to kind of balance, you know, lines in one corner, lines in one corner, lines in one corner, like in, like in a four corner, more or less. The reasoning behind our choices can be completely different, right? Your choices could be different because guided from by a different thought, different intention and a different purpose for your piece, which is what makes art so interesting and fascinating, right? Because as we learn about creative process and critical thinking, we also learn that there are really infinite possibility and infinite paths that we can take in our project because we can have a very different purposes, right? And we might want to express very different meanings and have a very different feelings.
and we are almost done. And I think that I will leave it as it is. I like the contrast between an, like a an very textured, implied textured petals and very like blank, you know, blank and simple. I also feel that the black, the ones that they have the pattern kind of recede inside the background, while the ones that are just that white, they pop uh, on the, you know, they pop up from the background and I like it extremely simple. I think that it's, uh, I don't want to say minimalistic because it still, you know, has some details, but definitely more minimalistic than other that we did. It's up to you if we want to keep going and bring this implied texture in every single flower. If you just want to do the biggest flower and leave the tiniest one without, it's really up to you. Play around and see what happens. I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, the practice of today is over and I hope that you had a great time as I did. This is the design that we came up with. And as I say during the practice, and I encourage you, try something different. You can do the first practice like mine and then try it a second time, changing and switching something. Make your own choices and find your own connection and what gives you pleasure and a purpose, right? Uh, please ask me to join our Facebook group, Art With Miss B, so you can share the pictures of what you've been created. There are some subscribers, they are sharing their creation, and I'm always amazed about the difference between our personality, our skills, our artistic talents, and I just love it. Consider to subscribe, share my videos so many more people will know about this channel, and we will build a bigger, better, and stronger community. I wish you all a fantastic day, and I'll see you very soon. Ciao a tutti!